G'day again guys and thank you for joining me. It feels great to be sitting here at my desk again. It feels like forever since I've had this microphone in front of me and I've been able to talk to you guys about some art. I've got my cup of tea ready so let's get into it. So the main reason I created this piece is because I'm still trying to get through a big stack of hassle mat uh, that I bought off Amazon. Now there's nothing wrong with this stuff, it's just that my local art shop has got some bigger sheets in supply and I really can't justify going out and spending more money on pastel mat until I get through this pile. So there's going to be a few more of these little guys in the future. I honestly wasn't sure what I wanted to draw so I got onto my computer and I went through my big folder of images that I've saved over the years. And this little guy's been sitting in this folder for years, years and years. I actually can't count the amount of times that I've opened up that folder, seen this little image and got all excited ready to put him on paper and then it just didn't happen. Some other shiny idea popped up and this little tamarind was forgotten again. I started this piece following the now familiar procedure of using my pan pastels as a background. I really feel like I'm not using these things to their best potential. Just shoving them in for a background. I think I do have to do something a little bit more in depth with them one day. I have to have a play around. Uh, but for now, it's just so quick and easy to get a really nice blended background in place with this stuff. Everything was going fine and easy, uh, but when I got to his mouth and moustache, I started to feel a little bit nervous. I don't think I've drawn any open mouths in colour pencil. Uh, I can't think of one off the top of my head. So I wasn't sure how dark I could go with the inside of his mouth, especially considering it was going to be sitting right in the middle of those bright white whiskers. So I started off reasonably light-handed and just kept building up the reds and pinks pretty slowly. The teeth were also a little bit of a challenge. I wanted them to be... Well, I wanted them to stand out, but I certainly didn't want them to look cartoonish or outlined in any way. So there was a lot of going backwards and forwards with lighter and darker colours until I got them to look right. Next it was time to put in those adorable little whiskers. I took a moment to plan in advance where they were going to go. Uh, I knew I was going to have to draw in some really big, bold white lines, um, and I also knew how easy it would be to accidentally get a little bit too excited and start drawing them in all directions. So I took just a little bit of an extra moment to really have a look at my reference photo and pay close attention to where those whiskers were falling and which way they were curling. And this little bit of advanced planning went a long way to getting it right. With his gorgeous little face complete, I moved onto his body. His fur has a lot of stuff going on in it. Lots of changes in colour and texture. I started off trying to draw in with each individual hair, but it was taking forever and it really wasn't looking the way that I wanted. So I pulled out the odorless mineral spirits and used it to spread out a base layer of colour. Now, you have to be very, very careful when using the odorless mineral spirits on the pastel mat. This is because it's really, really easy to lift that pigment back off the paper. So you only need an itty bitty tiny little amount on the brush to get things moving. A nearly dry brush will do the job. If the brush is too wet, all it's gonna do is pick up too much pigment off that paper and it's really gonna fly around the page and you're not going to have a lot of control of where the color ends up landing. Which actually might be fun if you're doing something a little bit more abstract, uh, but definitely not ideal for when you're trying to do something a little bit more realistic. Once I had that base layer of colours down, I was able to very quickly pop in some various different shades over the top, which meant that this section of the piece came together very, very quickly. The final part of this piece was to complete his little tiny feet. This is actually a little bit difficult to see in the reference photo that I had. His black fur was making it really hard to see the details where his toes sort of started and finished. So I did have to look up a couple of images of other tamarinds to try and get an idea of how their toes actually work. I made my very best guess on how they should look 
and using some Prussian blue and sky blue I highlighted some of that really really black fur of his feet and with those in place all I had to do was finish off the branch that was underneath his feet and I was ready to call him done. So here's the final piece. I love this little guy, he's just adorable and looking at this piece on my wall at the moment just kind of makes me happy. <laughs> I'm so glad that I finally got this guy out of the I'll do that one day pile and got him onto paper. Now, as always, I would just like to take a moment to thank my patrons. Uh, there is a one hour real time video of how his little face and moustache come together. That is up and available now for you guys. I do hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you leave me a like or a comment to let me know what you think. As always, I do have a few projects on my desk at the moment, so if you'd like to see what I'm getting up to in between videos, then come have a little look-see over on Facebook and Instagram. And of course, if you would like to see more of my work, then why not hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys!